If you have been born again and you are spirit filled, you have the advantage. I just feel to share this message that's on my heart this evening. It's time that the church step up, take our God given authority and walk in the authority of the name of Jesus Christ and the authority of his word. The Bible says that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I'm telling you, it's time right now to step outside when we're at the grocery store, the mall, in the community, and start laying hands on people and watch them recover. We're in a season God is going to back us up. The Bible says that signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. Just want to share a couple testimonies with you. I was at dinner uh, in, in Pennsylvania, which is uh, a state away from where I live. And I saw a crowd of people around a man off to the distance. And we were trying to get seats. And I said to the, to the, the, uh, the waitress, ma'am, what's going on over there? She's like, there's a man laying on the ground. He's not moving. I said, ma'am, take me to him. She said, are you a doctor? I said, I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to pray for him. And she took me over to the man. I pushed through the crowd. There was a man laying on the ground and just foaming out of the mouth. I got on my one knee. I put my hand on him. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing over you. You shall live and not die. And immediately the man sat up, looked at me and said, what happened? I said, Jesus Christ healed you. Church, this is the authority we have. This is what God is calling us to in this hour. When we walk into grocery stores, we dispel spirits. We, not, Our boasting is in the Lord. It's not in you. It's not in me. It's in the Holy Ghost that is within us. It is the name and the blood that is applied to our lives. The Bible says every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm tired of the spirit of fear, oppression, depression. I get mad now when I feel it attack me because the Bible says God is not given us the spirit of fear but of love power and a sound mind it's time we rise up against these spirits it's time we realize wherever we go we bring the presence of the almighty god we are atmosphere changers wherever we go do you ever notice sometimes you walk into a restaurant especially after a church service some people start looking at you funny because the spirits that are in them recognize the spirit that is in you. That's exactly what is happening. And it's time we recognize that when we go out about our day, that we are carrying the presence of the almighty God and atmospheres are shifting. Let's talk about discerning spirits for a moment. Discerning spirits is more than just discerning whether it's a demonic spirit you're coming against, a human spirit, an angelic spirit, or the spirit of God. You ever walk into a, let's say a mall or a store and you just don't feel right. Sometimes you feel nauseous or you walk into a restaurant, you feel an oppression and a heaviness. That's the spirit of discernment operating in you. Sometimes I'll just walk into the bathroom or under my breath. I say, I bind that spirit of oppression, whatever you're feeling. God's telling you what it is. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Take authority over it. God's going to back you up. We are the body of Christ. He's the head. We are functioning for him in this earth, advancing his kingdom. It's time. It's time. I was on a plane a couple of years ago and this, uh, you know, young guy in his thirties, I had, I had a, one of the front aisle seats by the exit doors. So I had kind of like just a clear view and he took a step up and collapsed right on his face, was not breathing, was not moving. Immediately the Holy Ghost stirred up in me. I got down, I laid hands on him. Same thing, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing and life over you. And same thing, he sat up immediately and looked at me and said, what happened? And I said, Jesus Christ healed you. Church, we have this authority. I'm nothing special. I just want to testify the goodness of God. It is time that we step out of the boat. It's time that we move. God is calling us in this hour to rise up. The time is short. We got to witness. We got to testify. We got to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. The world is in bad shape. But, you know, some people want to focus on the darkness of the world and how dark the world is getting. But let me tell you, the darker the world gets, the lighter we get. Light stands out greater in darkness. We are called to be the light and the salt of this earth. So don't focus on the darkness. Focus, you know what? That's more of an opportunity for me to shine. The darker this world gets, the more they're going to see me. They're going to see you. They're going to see the church of the living God. Why? Because we are a beacon of light on a hill that cannot be hid, the Bible says. God has equipped each one of us 
with his spirit. When we are spirit filled, we have the gifts of the spirit. We have the gifts of working of miracles, healings. And I'm just testifying a little bit tonight because I feel some somebody on here right now. God wants to use you in healing. God's going to bring some sick people past you. Remember, don't be intimidated. Don't be shy. You can't, you can't take the credit if, if, if the God performs the miracle anyway. So you can't take the fall if it doesn't happen. That's okay. But just know that it's not you. It's, this, it's the God that lives within you. When you feel compassion or you're moved with compassion for somebody, that's not you. That's the spirit that is within you. And that is a sign and that is an emotion that triggers the miraculous. Multiple times in the Bible, uh, the go- in the Gospels, the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. And in those instances, it says that he healed everyone. It's good to be moved with compassion. Look for healing at that point. When you're feeling compassion for somebody, you might not see a physical sickness or a cancer. Right now, so many people are dealing with sickness in their minds, you know, mental depressions and and, and all kinds of schizophrenia and, and mental disorders is, you know, is the big buzzword these days. Well, guess what? The blood of Calvary heals mental disorders. It doesn't only just heal cancer and AIDS and leukemia. But it lay hands on somebody, pray for them, say, I just feel God wants to touch you right now. Can I pray for you? Ask them. The Bible says not to lay hands on anybody suddenly. Ask them if you feel the prompting of the Holy Ghost. What do you have to lose? We got to stop worrying about looking stupid or embarrassed or listen, we're a, I'm a fool for Christ. Jesus, the Bible says he took the foolishness of this world to confound the wise. That's us. In our weakness, he is made strong. Church, it's time to rise up. Praise God. Praise God. Be ready to call out on the name of Jesus. I remember my my son, my oldest is 11. When he was about three years old, he fell off a stool, um, like a step stool in the bathroom. And he had a white t-shirt on. He stepped off the side. And as he was coming down, his mouth his lips caught the side of the toilet on the, the, the porcelain hard side of the toilet. He got up and blood just started running down his shirt. His teeth went through in, into deep into his uh, bottom lip here. I pulled it back and blood started gushing out. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak healing over you. And immediately the blood stopped. I pulled his lip back and it was a little red dot. It was an absolute miracle. Let me tell you something. In times, you want to see the miraculous work? This is where it's worked almost 100% of the time for me. When faith is mixed with desperation, the miraculous will work every time. Just just think about uh, he's our loving father. How much more does he love us than we love our own children, our own family? If my little child screams out to me, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to react. If he's whining and complaining, yeah, I might kind of, you know, might not be as quick to react. But when they cry out in desperation, we are children of God. When we cry out to God with faith and desperation, expect the miraculous. Church, it's coming. It's coming. Many around us are starting to get sick. You're reading medical reports. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into it because it'll probably be censored. But I have a, a co-worker in good shape, 40 years old, thin, works extremely hard. And, um, you know, during COVID, how to get some medication, let's put it like that. And I see him, we're coming back from a job and he's breathing heavy and he's hold, he's he's breathing heavy. He's holding his, his chest. And I said, brother, what's going on right now? He's like, I don't know him breathing heavy, holding my chest. I put my hand, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke any poison. I rebuke any spirit of infirmity right now. And I speak healing over you. And immediately he says, I feel feel better, Greg. So whatever it is, God has given us the authority. It's going to be us. The Lord has been talking to me for years about mass healings that everyone we lay our hands on, God's going to heal. And we get excited for that. But guess what? People got to get sick. Something's got to be wrong. And we know stuff is hitting this earth between pandemics, between uh, all kinds of poisons that are out there that, you know, are being put into our bodies. 
God is raising up his church. He is putting us on a platform that we've never been on before. We are going to be on display for this whole world. From the wealth transfer, I've been making a lot of videos about that. We are not going to be borrowers anymore. We're going to be lenders in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to put hospitals out of business. We are going to pray for people in rooms and hospitals and the entire floors are going to get healed. Entire ICUs are going to get cleared out. Not because you and me, but because we went in there with the power of the almighty God and we proclaim the name of Jesus Christ that every sickness, cancer, and disease has to bow down to death itself, has to bow down to the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you all. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate you all for that and your kind comments. And uh, I look forward to the next video in Jesus' name.